What's up? So a few years ago I posted a video discussing the do's and don'ts of going to Cuba, followed by an update in 2017 after more legal avenues opened up for Americans to go to Cuba. Since then, Cuba's changed a bit and the laws around going to Cuba have also changed. However, it's still relatively easy for Americans to go to Cuba. So today, I'm going to have a nice little glass of Cuban rum and give you a nice little update. I'm mainly going to be discussing how the laws have changed surrounding Americans going to Cuba. I'm also going to be talking about how Cuba's changed in regards to where to stay, where to eat, and the Wi-Fi's. When we went, there were two ways to go to Cuba. There was a legal way where you'd book through an authorized tour group. That guy's going to do that shit. And the illegal way where you can buy a plane ticket to another country, for instance Mexico, where travel to Cuba is not illegal, buy a ticket and fly over. From there you just simply have a $25 tax to enter Cuba and a $25 tax to leave. Now you can book flights directly from the US to Cuba, however you have to declare a travel category for the purpose of your stay. You could choose visiting family, humanitarian projects to provide support to the Cuban people, official business of the US government, foreign governments, and certain intergovernmental organizations, journalistic activities, professional research, educational activities by persons at academic institutes, people to people travel, religious activities, public performances, clinics, workshops, athletic or other competitions or exhibitions, authorization to provide travel services, carrier services, and remittance forwarding services. Wow. Activities of private foundations, research or educational institutes, exploration of certain internet based services. I don't see an app for that. You will need to download one. Well, sorry if I triggered your iPhone. You'll also need to obtain a Cuban travel card. Cuban? Cuban? You'll also need to you'll also need to obtain a you'll also need to obtain a Cuban travel card. This can usually be obtained through the airline you're flying in on and usually costs 50 bucks. You'll also need Cuban health insurance. You can get that when you land in Havana and it usually costs a couple bucks a day. I don't know whether or not the $25 tax still applies or if it's absorbed into the Cuban travel card. I've been told it is, but things change down there all the time. So even though you probably won't have to, be prepared to pay that or any other fee that they might pop up on you. <laughs> then you got the restricted list. This is a list of over a hundred different businesses that you're not allowed to spend any money at. You need to memorize every single name on this list and make sure you don't spend any money at any of these places or you'll be in direct violation of international travel agreement. Or you could just not do that and probably nothing will happen. And most of the places on this list are big hotels, big restaurants, maybe the restaurants and bars that are in these hotels. If this is something that worries you, an easy way to avoid it, stay with a local casa, Airbnb, eat with the people you're staying at, talk to them, take their recommendations, eat at small restaurants, small bars, spend most of your money at small businesses. That way you'll be directly supporting the Cuban people, which is probably the travel category you'll pick. I can see how these rules and regulations and travel restrictions can be off-putting. There's also even travel advice to consult a professional trip planner to figure out a full schedule for you so you don't get into trouble down there. Getting into trouble in Cuba is really hard to do unless you f up real good. But if you're an overly cautious person, maybe you're going there with your family and you want to, you know, protect your family and make sure your family's safe, the American government, Cuban government, don't really get along. Cuba could, I guess, technically say you're a spy. You could also get back to the U.S. and they could know you went to Cuba and you could get investigated by Homeland Security or the FBI. Trump might show up and spank you with a magazine that he was featured in. I don't know, but it could, it could, I'm just saying, like it could happen. So be prepared for a thorough spanking. <laughs> Swimming in the ocean in Cuba. Finding a place to stay has also changed. When we went, you could literally just fly in, leave the airport, get into a taxi, ask them where to stay and they would just take you to a place. That's what we did and it worked out. It's a popular thing down there. Everyone knows a place you can stay. Airbnb has been in Cuba for the last few years. Now you can just go on the site, scroll down and find a place to stay. Surprisingly, some of the places are even cheaper than we paid. We were paying 25 to 30 bucks a night. Some of these places are 20, even $15 to stay. One was even 13. You could also get more expensive places with Wi-Fi included, or you could pay even more and get an entire apartment or condo, or you could pay even more and get an entire apartment with Wi-Fi and chefs and maids and oh boy, pimp time. Baller alert. Probably one of the biggest things to change about Cuba in the last few years, the Wi-Fi's. If you have one of those really special phones that uses the Wi-Fi's, 
Wi-Fi is now available all over Cuba. There's hotspots around the city, it's available in some restaurants, and like I said, sometimes it's even available at the casa you're staying at. When we went just a few years ago, it was literally so hard to get on the internet, unless you absolutely had to, it wasn't even worth doing. The options were either usually one or two internet cafes in the city, where you had to wait like 45 minutes to pay money to get on the internet, or you could try a hotel lobby. And more than half the time, the internet was just down and didn't work at all. No Wi-Fi, only two options we found. Food has also changed a lot. Back when we went, unless you ate with a family or found a really nice restaurant, like I said in the last video, so the food on Cuba out on the streets and in small restaurants absolutely sucks. Your options are usually cheese pizza, burgers that consist of the bun, some ketchup or mustard, the patty, and a piece of ham. The solution is don't stay in a hotel, stay in a casa with a real Cuban family. They will cook you real Cuban food. You will get chicken, you will get vegetables, you will get rice with some beans in it and some flavoring and seasoning and it will taste good. And that's true. That was the street food down there. Now it's catered a lot more heavily to tourists. There's a lot of different types of restaurants down there. There's even vegan restaurants there you can eat at and use the Wi-Fi's. I might be doing another video on the topic soon. Let me know what questions you might have, what you want to see on the next one. I'm definitely not an all-out expert on Cuba, but I've been there. I know a lot of other people who've been there. I know people that, you know, go all the time, and I know that it's awesome. It makes awesome rum. If you want to see that, give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. If you're looking for a taste of Cuba with a sterling twist, check out this video where I show you how to make a gin version of a Cuban mojito. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. I make all sorts of videos related to travel, how to make drinks, food, and other fun sh**.